Philip K. Dick was one of the greatest sci-fi writers of all time. Adaptations of his work include the films Blade Runner, Total Recall, Minority Report and The Adjustment Bureau. Not a bad CV. In 1977, just five years before his death at the young age of 53, Dick was giving a speech at a sci-fi convention, expecting to listen to him talking about how to write great sci-fi stories. Instead, the crowd were witness to something completely unexpected. <coughs> You are free to believe me or to disbelieve, but please take my word on it that I am not joking. This is very serious, a matter of importance. A somber Philip Dick took to the microphone and delivered a haunting message. I'm going to be very candid with you. I wrote both novels based on fragmentary residual memories of such a horrid slave state world. People claim to remember past lives. I claim to remember a different, very different present life. Could it be? that the greatest sci-fi writer of all time was in fact not writing science fiction at all. We are living in a computer programmed reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is We are in a simulation, couldn't our overlords have given me a more aesthetically pleasing avatar? What am I meant to do with this? Pop in a couple of bionic eyes, will ya? Firstly, thank you for being here. I will pin a comment under every video asking for your story ideas for future videos. In a time where people are under immense stress, I hope this channel is a bit of fun, a bit of escapism and intriguing also. The scenario is this, everything you see, everything you touch, every person you love, every happy and sad moment, every success and failure, None of it's real. We are all part of a simulated reality created by a technology so advanced that our very understanding and perception of who we are and the world around us is indistinguishable from the simulation. Imagine a day where you can simulate a world so perfectly with life forms, humans, so well mm -hmm. that you can recreate every single neurosynaptic thought you could have, but now you're in the simulation on the computer. Could it be? that we are living inside the Matrix. And for those of you who haven't seen the Matrix, go and sit in the naughty corner and don't come out till you've learned your lesson. Well, Oxford University professor Nick Bostrom argues that may very well be the case. He is, if you like, the modern day father of a theory that he called simulation theory. I mean, I guess the intuitive way of thinking about it, like what way, like what, what are the chances that right. just by chance you would happen to be uh, living in the most interesting time in history, yeah. being like a celebrity, like whatever, like, what, well, like uh, that's pretty low prior probability. Like His premise is that a post-human civilization could have the means to have developed a simulated world. This world. Within that world, some people may be conscious of the simulation, whilst others aren't. The Matrix. It, it's the Matrix. And where the simulation hypothesis is then one of only three kind of options. Um, well, one is that there is all, almost all civilizations at our current stage of technological development go extinct before reaching technological maturity. Option two is that there is a very strong convergence among all technologically mature civilizations uh, in that they all lose interest in creating ancestor simulations. So, so maybe they have all of these computers that could do it, but for whatever reason, they all decide not to do it. And what's number three? Uh, that we are in a simulation, the simulation hypothesis. And it's not just a modern idea. Ancient civilizations such as the Aztecs, for example, believed that the world is some type of painting. We can also relate these ideas to solipsism, which is a philosophical concept where in essence, the only thing that we can verify as real is ourselves our own mind and everything around us, if you like, could be a fiction of our imagination. And we have evidence that the world around us may even be shaped by us. The double slit experiment provided proof for something called the observer effect. In this experiment by Thomas Young in 1801, he found that when we do not measure light, it consists of waves. But when we measure and observe it, 
It consists of particles, which simply means that when we observe light and matter, its behavior changes, almost like the very fabric of our being changes depending if we're looking at it or not. I'll just leave that with you. The argument for the simulation, I think is quite strong because if you assume any improvement at all over time, any improvement, 1%, 0.1%, just extend the time frame, make it a thousand years, a million years, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, then games will be indistinguishable from reality. or civilization will end. One of those two things will occur. And it's not just great scientific minds that could comprehend the idea of a simulated reality. I think we all can. We live in a time of AI where ChatGPT has allowed a generation of students to never have to do homework again. We have incredibly realistic video games. Unreal Engine has come out recently. We have virtual reality devices and smartphones which have turned us into a generation of mindless zombies. Sorry, smartphones which have turned us into an advanced civilization with access to incredible amounts of information. <clears throat> we have created the internet and social media where people all around the world can interact with each other and illegally download films. So given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are interesting from reality and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever and there would probably be you know billions of such uh, you know computers or set-top boxes it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions could there be some sort of higher being or beings gods if you like that have created the very world we live in I'm pretty sure our AI kings have dropped coffee on the master computer because we seem to be glitching a bit right now. Mm. And so if we are to take simulation theory as plausible, we could rethink essentially the history of the universe, the Big Bang, all the laws of physics and nature that govern our world are simply a computer program. Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, <laughs> are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. And it may not just be this simulated universe. There may be others, what would be known as a multiverse. That raises the question, could we somehow pass from one to another? Could we see things from other realities and take those memories into our reality? Bioshock 3 basically, great game. Do you remember when Nelson Mandela died in prison? Yep, so do many other people, except it never happened. There is a phenomenon known as the Mandela effect, where we are sure that certain events took place, when in fact they just didn't. Could this be some sort of recollection that people are having from other realities? What colour is C-3PO from Star Wars? All gold, obviously. Except for the silver bit. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Or not. Well, I'm sure we've all had a lovely scoop of Jiffy peanut butter. Nope. And there's one that really gets me, the famous Darth Vader line to Luke Skywalker. We all know that. Luke, I am your father. No, I am your father. Now with the Mandela effect, a simple explanation is we just aren't remembering stuff correctly. People are making spelling mistakes, not recalling events accurately. It's not definitive proof of multiple simulated realities interacting with each other. What about deja vu? Where something happens to you and you could swear that you've lived that moment before, that exact same thing has happened to you before. It's basically when you experience something you shouldn't have, like someone farting in yoga class. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present, deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way hearing the same words, saying the same words, I submit that these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, <coughs> such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off. Now at this point you may say, well, we can have all the fun discussions we want about potential simulated realities. Do we have any hard data suggesting that we may be living in a simulation? Well, yes. Yes, we do. These are pictures of equations. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. 
And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> Dr. Sylvester James Gates Jr. is a theoretical physicist who, whilst working on supersymmetry, made a remarkable discovery. In this con the mathematical context of such equations, we have discovered that there are mathematical structures that are indistinguishable from error correcting codes, as does occur in digital um, information transmission. And so his work has added to the validity of the idea that we're nothing more than just ones and zeros. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, <laughs> strings of bits of ones and zeros. If that blows your mind, I raise you computer code in DNA. In 2017, Dr. Kono from the University of Washington led a team who successfully managed to encode malware into DNA. DNA is, after all, just a way of storing information, the instructions for making living things, such as us. Dr. Kono's team converted a piece of malware into physical DNA strands, and when those strands were sequenced, they managed to use the DNA to take over a computer. The present day threat is very small and people don't need to lose sleep immediately. But we wanted to know what was possible and what the issues are down the line. Absolute chaos is the answer, Dr. Kono. And so as much fun as this theory is, of course, there's criticism of it. Dr. Gates himself has recently distanced himself from the idea that finding the computer code means that we're in some sort of simulation Whereas actually, in fact, he feels that it might be revealing something more subtle about our physics. So although many people like to say my work supports simulation theory, I actually believe that it's pointing to something far more beautiful and subtle about the nature of the laws of physics. Physicist Michio Kaku strongly argues against the simulation theory when he makes statements such as this. Yeah. Now, even Newtonian mechanics says that the weather the simple weather is so complicated with trillions upon trillions of atoms that it cannot be simulated in a finite amount of time. In other words, the smallest object which can describe the weather and simulate the weather is the weather itself. The smallest object that can simulate a human is the human itself. And if you add quantum mechanics, it becomes almost impossible to simulate it with a conventional computer. There is also the logical argument of the amount of computing power it would take to create a simulation so realistic as the one we may live in. And so simulation theory is a technological, a philosophical, a mathematical idea. It is fascinating to think about. And wherever you stand on simulation theory, be careful. Because as philosopher Preston Green in 2019 stated, if we are indeed living in a simulation and we become aware of that fact, the simulation may end.